Hello and welcome to this recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live code hangout. Today we've been working on the Sustainable Urban Design app. It's a, an app that's going to promote sustainable urban development and make it easy for people to see what's going on and track progress of uh, sustainable urban design initiatives, I'm sorry I'm repeating that so much, that are in alignment with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals as well as other regional and municipal level goals. Um, the feature we've been working on today is to allow people to define an administrative area which couldn't be any kind of a geographic area um, like a municipality or something um, that's responsible for uh, co co like coordinating urban de development activities. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm stuttering a little bit, but the essential model we're following in, in the, oops, this is actually not it, the country of Finland is very proactive, uh, even since uh, I think 2000, 2008, in defining um, carbon targets, not fully carbon neutral, but 80% uh, carbon reduction, and getting municipalities and other communities mobilized to meet those targets. And so they have this carbon neutral Finland project, and we're kind of you know drawing inspiration from this, and, and just researching what's going on here in Finland. Uh, one of the ma main things that uh, is apparent when viewing this site, it's really well done and there are news updates, and even, you know, relatively recent ones, some good updates. Um, you know, and even some data that's been published. I haven't fully reviewed all this. And they've got this Hinku um, municipality network, and essentially it's um, you know, cities and other municipalities around Finland who have who've agreed to reduce their emissions by 80%. Uh, and they, they agreed back in 2008 originally, and um, s over 70 municipalities have joined. Um, and when we look at the municipalities here, you know, you see populations and when they joined. Um, other than that, you kind of have to dig uh, to find updates, and if you wanted to compare one municipality over the other, um, it's just not easy to do. The information might be out there, the data might be out there. Again, I, I haven't dug too deeply into there, but. Um, you know, we want to follow suit and we want to kind of um, see if there's a way to improve this type of um, initiative and to make the data more available so we can kind of export that idea even outside of Finland. So we're learning a lot here. Uh, it's a very inspiring place to be right now. I think the Nordic countries, in particular Finland, are doing some really great with quality of life and sustainability initiatives. So that said, um, they're defining these as municipalities. and. Originally, I was going to just add a new feature called municipalities to a, a, a data model, uh, but I realized on researching it that the, the term municipality is actually um, not as cut and dry as I thought in even my conventional United States English, Midwestern U.S. English. Municipality means like a city or some kind of a township or something like that, uh, but it turns out there's just enough diversity around the term and other linguistic uh, alternatives like commune or commune and uh, local government area needed a more generic concept that could kind of encompass those. And administrative division seemed like the probably best fit. Um, you know, it's an umbrella term for a bunch of different types of areas, but the common thread is that they're usually a subnational, they're constituent units of some larger national or regional body and they typically have governmental, I think they typically have a governmental uh, mandate or something along those lines. In any case, I don't want to get too deep into the semantics of there, but you know, we do need to choose good names for our software to the extent possible, but it's, there's, everything's got trade-offs. So that's essentially what we've done. We've, um, I'll just show you the changes today and uh, how the code reflects those or how those co are uh, reflected in the code. So we created a new feature here called administrative divisions, and now we're essentially um, shifting. The original idea was projects. A uh, project would be like a city, and then I realized that, that was a mistake. It's projects are usually relating to a city, but this yeah, city is a distinct entity that might be commissioning projects, and projects could span multiple municipalities or cities. So um, now I'm realizing these projects are like um, parts of the city and parts of broader design initiatives. 
so I would, for example, delete the city of Tampere here, and we've uh, created this administrative divisions feature. It's just kind of boilerplate um, templates and code, but we're going to, with this foundation, hopefully make the information easier to surface and compare. Uh, so it's essentially you list uh, these um, municipal administrative divisions, I still have a hard time saying that phrase, and you can edit them, really basic stuff, but then you have a link to the uh, official source of information about that place, munici municipality in this case, and a list that we can um, extend with different types of uh, these divisions as needed. So far I've only needed municipality, and in the city of Tampere there's many districts that also have um, projects going on, projects and initiatives, uh, I think is a hierarchical cool thing. So let's take a look at the um, code and how we've actually uh, implemented it as a hierarchical model. Uh, I think that's the main information for the background and the task. Uh, there's a couple of uh, follow-ups I'm going to have to be doing with relating these administrative areas to the projects. Uh, and groups is another concept, of, such as this, um, sorry, this Hinku is a kind of a group or a consortium or a network of uh, municipalities, so we'll have to have a um, software component to define those. We're going to move there stepwise. But in any case, here's the, the administrative division data model. It's, an, um, <laughs> I don't even know what this stands for, so let me just Google it. And it's a uh, it's basically a tree model, modified pre-order tree traversal. So I don't know the modified. You can move this stuff around on there, and pre-order means like somehow that's cached in memory or something like that. Or you can set the order of the sort on the tree. I don't know the, much of the theory behind it. Uh, tree traversal. I think it means it's easy to find siblings and parents and children and things like that. And uh, probably has to do with the pre-caching or pre-ordering of it. In any case. There's like three main tree model, um, active th tree model projects, packages for Django. Uh, I went with this one because it allows us to have kind of a forest. I don't believe there's like one uh, hierarchy in life in general. Uh, generally it's you know, different hierarchies and even uh, in some cases just relationships and not necessarily hierarchies. It's probably even more prevalent, but in the case of districts, I think our governmental uh, structures tend to be modeled after a hierarchy uh, or be in hierarchical form. So that's why we went with this hierarchy here. Uh, and essentially, you just, I think by convention or some of the magic here in the MPTT model, it's going to be looking for a name field. So this is one thing we'll have to be changing through the whole app is I've been using title previously. We'll have to just refactor the code to use name so that way we're consistent. Uh, we have a description field, a website, and then this enum which allows us to choose a division type and then the hierarchy here. I'm actually not using the field here in this pull request, but I will be looking into that in a future coding session. Uh, the string method just returns the name so we can display it nicely in the user interface and then get absolute URL helps us get a reverse uh, URL to this entity if we're using a template or something like that. The For division type, we're using a Django 3, um, new Django 3 feature called text choices. It's essentially an enum with a few extra um, features added that lets you just um, uh, define um, typically model field choices with a key and then a value, there are tuples of keys and values, and this you can use uh, get text to localize those values. I have some open questions uh, about localization in Django projects in particular, um, whether to use the actual English language text as the locale key, or if there's a more uh, way to use more generic uh, keys that aren't language specific, that are more uh, relating to the software component. Um, so there's less ambiguity. Language is pretty ambiguous, and software already is pretty ambiguous as well, but it's a little bit more well-defined than human language. And the values, well, of course, would be the, the locale, localized strings. But I don't think that these should be used for keys. So I'll have to just read a little bit more about localization and, and best practices in Django. Uh, so once we defined the model and migrated that in, uh, we essentially just defined some boilerplate views here. Uh, there's these generic view types. 
uh, detail in the list view to kind of list uh, multiple entities and list details, uh, show details about one entity. And then some generic edit views for creating and updating. Um, not using delete, uh, I've registered this with this with the Django admin. So if we absolutely need to delete a project or entity in this administrative division in this case, we can do that through the Django admin. Uh, so these classes just save you some time. And uh, essentially uh, what I need to, to do is just define a few fields, like what model we're uh, uh, rendering here, and the context object name to make our templates a little easier to read. And this is not necessary, but I find it nice to explicitly define the template name. Uh, one, just so uh, because explicit is better than implicit. And the other one is, um, by default, I think it was like Django was using something like administrative division form. It was just a little confusing where sometimes it was administrative divisions. So yeah, we're just able to define those here. And um, for create and update views, you also either define fields because Django is, is going to auto-generate your form for you, or you can override that with the form class. And I've previously done that in um, the project app where I defined a form. We'll probably be going that direction in another um, live coding session just by way of um, previewing this because I have been doing some coding off stream. When you have a project like here in Ranta and I view it, uh, we've got this geographic area here which is a widget I sort of worked with um, over the weekend and uh, honestly it wasn't very great live streaming material. It was more frustrating than um, in any case, now that I've got uh, the little example here, I can follow that. And what it does is let you define a bounding box for um, a project area. We'll be doing that with these um, administrative area divisions, but I think the geometry is going to be more nuanced, and perhaps the user could even update or upload their own geometry. I'll have to figure out what's the best next step to take. And we would like probably to let them specify a point as well as a polygon for different purposes. But in any case, uh, we're not doing that yet, so we're just defining the fields here instead of a custom form class, which was necessary for the project views. Um, then once we've got the um, views, we just since we make a URL mapping, you know, create, view, you just take the primary key, edit, and the list. It's pretty straightforward stuff. All this code is available on GitHub. You can feel free to copy and paste it. And mainly that's what I'm doing, in fact, is copy and pasting my own code. Uh, it's a lot of boilerplate. Maybe there's a way to kind of auto-generate boilerplate at this level. Django does have the uh, st uh, start app command that will scaffold your app, but it doesn't like give you crud um, URLs, even though this is just pretty straightforward stuff. I, I wonder if there's like a, something out there that would give me basic crud views and templates uh, when I start an app. I'll Maybe look into that. If you've got any suggestions, um, please feel free to share those with me in uh, the comments. The only people in this chat today have been spam bots. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the um, templates here. It's just pretty straightforward stuff. For the time being, I'm sticking with Bootstrap, so it just helps us, me not have to think about CSS. I'm very interested in learning more. Uh, about CSS, in particular CSS Grid. I've fought Bootstrap a little bit on some of the layouts, but uh, you know I think it's doing pretty good with Flexbox, and Bootstrap 5 is going to be pretty nice. So we just have a crispy form to render our... Actually, is that even necessary now that I can clean this up? Uh, this is our administrative divisions list, and I had a modal dialog here previously, so that's why that crispy form tag is still there. Uh, in any case, you uh, have a header on the page that uh, is the title. Administrative divisions, uh, this create new button, and they're both in the header and the span, and this links to the administration administrative division create view, which was originally in a modal. The reason I had to sort of take it out of the modal is because I couldn't figure out how to get the open layers map to render properly in the modal, which is like rendering as one pixel or something. I'm sure there's a way to figure that out, but it's already kind of large in any case, so maybe a modal is not the best approach for it. Um, and then if there are administrative divisions that are defined, it's going to iterate over each of those. And again, I used the context um, sorry, context object name here, administrative divisions, and then I can iterate those. 
over those and display them as a um, sorry, a Django, uh, bootstrap card. I was just reading these classes. Put a little spacing around them. Um, the key here is that it uh, lets me define our unordered list as a row, and then each of the cards will just sort of like fill out the row until it can't fit anymore, and it'll actually kind of create new you know, quasi rows but without having me to explicitly define that or do some sort of division and put a new row div in there or yeah something like that so that's pretty nice card body title and text they're just um, here are showing the name description um, then we've got a couple of links here I'm going to try to move these links to a, like a card footer or something so that it's a little bit more clean and aesthetically aligned uh, otherwise, it's going to show some text. Uh, nothing, no administrative divisions found. Um, when we view details of one, it's pretty much the same stuff. Just a few um, bootstrap classes. I think actually I can. I don't need this margin top. It's already pretty clean. Ah, yeah, it's not too bad. Less is more. Just uh, keep it simple. And there's a button, an edit button that links to the administrative division update view, which also renders that same form. And really briefly, we will look at the form template. Um, this is where we need crispy form tags because uh, Django's automatically generated forms are just using kind of plain HTML um, elements, inputs, and they don't look really great. And either I could manually iterate over the form elements and then insert the DOM, uh, the template tags and, and classes, or just use crispy form. So I'm trying to save a little bit of time, make things you know somewhat nice. Um, so uh, we'll use the, we'll render the form with the crispy tag and it kind of just makes some, adds the bootstrap classes and lays things out kind of nicely. Um, in the header, again, we have uh, a button that's aligned with the header in one. In this case, it, we're looking for the presence of a context object. If that exists, we, we know we're basically editing one in this case. But if that context object doesn't exist, if I'm going to create a new page, because Django is sharing this form and page, well, the page, the form template, um, it'll display this alternative create administrative division text. That was a nice little approach that I found on Stack Overflow. Pretty straightforward and idiomatic. And that's about it. It's really boilerplate stuff, but mainly I, I wanted to showcase where the project is going. I know I've been a little bit quiet. I haven't released any videos lately. And just also show what's, you know, these cool things we're finding out about uh, Finland and the, you know, uh, initiative to become a carbon neutral society and what, you know, we can each do in our own local and regional contexts. So thank you very much for your time. Um, feel free to leave any questions or comments on the video. If you want to uh, get involved with the project, stop by github.com slash sustainable urban design. There's um, several tasks on here I've indicated uh, that are kind of you know good for good first issue and we need some help on a few of these. There's research tasks, there's design tasks. You can also just try the software out, suggest ideas, or we're really open to ideas here as well. Likewise, if you want to get involved with a, another great open source community, stop by CodeBuddies.org. The CodeBuddies platform is open source on GitHub and is under a, a, currently under a rewrite. Uh, the back end is going to be written in Django, and the f I think it's going to have a React front end. I haven't checked in on the project in a while. But uh, yeah, CodeBuddies is a really great community. So thank you very much for your time. Have a great day, and stay well out there.